before he was eating carrots in Belarus, before he was throwing people into koi ponds, Steven Saboom Boom was a bona fide action movie star. Nowadays, this claim is hard to believe with movies like Out for a Kill, where he filmed a fight scene while sitting down in a chair. He's a child. It's funny because he's fat. However, let's not look it out for a kill for today. Let's take a look at the very start of his career with Above the Law. This movie opens up with a martial arts demonstration at a dojo with men in suits in the background. Who are the men in the suits? Probably the, probably the Yakuza that he beat in a fight to retain the rights to a dojo in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? No, I'm not kidding. Steven Saboom Boom really claims that he beat the Yakuza in a fight for the rights to a dojo. Anyways, we then see a sequence where Saboom Boom served in Vietnam and was a part of, you guessed it, the CIA. Did you know that Steven Saboom Boom helped train CIA agents while he was in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Yes, he has really claimed this too in interviews going back to 1988 when this movie originally came out. In this sequence, we see a CIA guy use his power to control his share of the drug market. Some little uh, doctor bag doesn't scare you. I know scare. Oh, you speak English. How nice. <laughs> There's a load, Colonel. Don't you that on it all. I'm gonna teach you never, never to fuck with my opium. Oh. Steven Saboom Boom, wanting to show some morals, beats up every person in the room. If I don't cap him now, he's gonna do me later. Now, look, you crazy fools. I'll call a chopper in for us. I'll cover this man. Just get the hell out of here. Get up. Come on, move. Let's bring him back here. After he quits, Steven Saboom Boom becomes a cop in Chicago of all places. It is worth noting that the director of Code of Silence, which also took place in Chicago, also wrote and directed this movie. Unfortunately for Steven Saboom Boom, this movie came too early in his career for him to handle everything solo. So, he gets teamed up with the one and only Foxy Brown. <laughs> I know. That's the idea. The rest of your boyfriend is still around. And I hope you two live a long time. And then maybe you get to feel what I feel. Death is too easy for you, bitch. While working as a cop in Chicago, he saves his niece or his goddaughter or whoever the hell this girl is from this drug dealer. And conveniently, he has information that Saboom Boom actually needs. Look, I'll give you something, okay? Something big. Oh, yeah? Look, this is huge, my man. It's a shipment. It's coming in next Tuesday. What the hell does a tuba piece of shit like you know about a shipment? I, this is square on my mother's soul. You gotta believe me, man. You can't set me up. It's, 
I heard it from this hooker friend of mine. She's banging this big coke lawyer. He told her. What lawyer? I don't know. You don't know, man. Carlos Abondano. That's the lawyer. Abondano. Better fucking pray to God you ain't bullshitting me, man. I'll come back and tear your heart out. Let's go. How convenient. But this is an 80s action movie, after all. Ben Kenobi had a famous line in the original Star Wars. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. But what Ben Kenobi ignored is that there is such a thing as coincidence in 80s action movies to just keep the plot in action moving forward. We then cut to see Saboom Boom at a factory where he and Foxy Brown are undercover waiting for the drug deal to go down. Saboom Boom decides that the best disguise is to look like a reject of the village people. YMCA. But... Before there are any drug deal happens, the feds have to ruin everything and cause a car chase. It is during this car chase that we see evidence of the fact that Steven Saboom Boom had his bones made of adamantium. So boom boom is on the top of the car and gets it to stop by choking out the passenger. The car pulls over and they pull out an engine block from the trunk that doesn't contain drugs but C4 explosives. And boom goes the dynamite. Not yet, kid. Not yet. We aren't that far into the movie. The drug dealers get busted, but then the feds have to intervene once again. Leave it up to him. A few minutes ago, I received a phone call from the first deputy superintendent's office. Now, as we all know, possession of these kinds of explosives are a federal offense and fall immediately under the jurisdiction of the federal agencies represented there. What kind of bullshit is that? The feds come in, the doors close, nobody hears, smells, or sees anything. And that's no answer. That's no answer as to why the biggest drug dealer in the city is out on the street as free as a fucking bird. Nico, keep it in your pants, right? These men have a job to do just like we do. Start game, let them play it. So Boom Boom, having none of this, decides to go rogue. He's a loose cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules. We then learn that the drug dealers got saved by this guy. <laughs> The same guy that was using Vietnam to fund his drug operation. We then go further down what I am calling the rabbit hole of ridiculousness that even Frederick Knudsen would have a field day with. We cut back to see the priest of the church that Seagal's family goes to, and he asks Saboom Boom to help him protect another priest that he is hiding. Why is this priest hiding? Because he accused this guy, Zagon, of human rights abuses in South America. Now, Zagon wants this priest dead. How do you think Zagon tries to take him out? Does he... A, sneak into the church at night to shoot this priest. B, poison the chalice that this priest drinks out of. C, throw him off the roof of the church onto the spire and turning him into a human shish kebab. Or D, you know what? Fuck all those options. Why not just plant a bomb during the middle of Sunday mass inside of the congregation where everyone will be other than the priest that Zagon is trying to kill? And boom goes the dynamite.
real subtle there, Zagon. Real subtle. If you're going to plant a bomb to kill a priest that you don't like, then make sure that you at least kill the right priest. Not only that, but do it in such a way that doesn't draw media attention to it because people will most certainly be looking into who this priest is now. But this was an 80s action movie, and mobsters in 80s action movies don't plan anything out with logic. They only do what everyone thinks will be cool to do on a movie screen. Steven Saboom Boom, now at the hospital, decides to say, fuck protocol, and go on a personal crusade to bring Zagon down. But, in doing so, he gets himself busted by the feds. Put your ass in that chair. Illegal wiretaps. Unauthorized surveillance. When was this guy born? You're quite a cop, Tuscany. You don't listen to anybody, do you? Where's Jax? She's out of this! You're the rotten apple in this barrel, Tuscany. We don't need to look any farther than you and your uh, family. You Miko! You want to go to prison? The feds should have locked him up because Saboom Boom, during his personal crusade, destroys an innocent grocery store that was caught in the crossfire of his illegal investigation. Get down, asshole. Get the fuck down. You want to get down? Get down on your fucking knees. No, no, no. You know, insurance doesn't cover intentional acts, and you know the city of Chicago will find a million and one excuses to not pay this poor grocer for all the damage that Saboom Boom caused. It's going to be hard to convince any jury that Saboom Boom was just waiting to be the first person to buy a box of Twinkies when the bread truck pulled into the grocery store. And don't you stand in the way of Steven Saboom Boom and his Twinkies. That man is on a mission to become diabetic by the year 2001. No one was going to leave that grocery store alive. <laughs> Don't let the beard fool you. He's a child. It's funny because he's fat. Foxy Brown is also poking around the priest from South America. And what do you know? He gets captured by Zagon. It turns out that he didn't need a bomb Sunday mass in order to get the guy he was after. Now, why was Zagon after this priest? Because Zagon wants to assassinate a senator, and the priest knew about the plan somehow. I wish I was making this up, but I'm not. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Father? No. It's a sin. Now look at me! If you spoke to anyone about our plans to kill the senator, tell me now. And I won't have to use this. This is from confession. I tell no one. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Saboom Boom and Foxy Brown try to save the priest, but Foxy Brown gets shot in the process. <laughs> Of course, this was the 1980s and slow-mo in action movies was all the rage, but luckily for Saboom Boom, she was wearing her bulletproof vest. In the words of Monty Python... Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left! Yes, I have! Look! It's just a flesh wound. 
Steven Saboom Boom inevitably gets captured by the Fed that was working with Zagon the entire time, and it leads to an explosive car chase. <laughs> So Boom Boom kills the Fed and then gets captured by Zagon. Zagon tries to use the chemical torture on Saboom Boom. Somehow, Steven Saboom Boom kicks out of the chemical torture and murders the shit out of everyone in the room. You are too fucking dumb, you asshole. <laughs> 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 The plot to assassinate the senator is thwarted and then everyone wants to hear about his experiences in the CIA. Oh, did I also make it very clear that this is an 80s action movie? And you know what? Watching this movie again for this review since it's been a decade for me since I've seen this last, I can honestly say that I believe that Steven Seagal believes that this movie is a biopic. We have a reference to the fighting the Yakuza for the rights to a dojo. We have Seagal in the CIA. Hell, this movie opens with a voiceover by Seagal that basically tells the story of his early childhood and then going to Japan. Also remember, also remember that Steven Seagal was a sheriff in Louisiana for 30 years. I make a living in the movies, but for the past 20 years, I've also been a cop. And along with some of the finest deputies on the force, I serve the people of Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. My name is Steven Seagal. That's right, Steven Seagal, Deputy Sheriff. So, all of the nonsense that Seagal has spewed in interviews about his life all pretty much come from this movie. Now, if we're judging the movie, minus Steven Saboom Boom, it's a good action movie, but it contains way more plot than it needs. It didn't need the stuff involving the CIA or the dojo in Japan. Just make it about a cop that busts a drug kingpin. That's it. That's all it needed to be. Make the Catholic priest a rival drug kingpin that Zagon wanted to take out. Then the bombing would have made sense. And I know that I've rambled, but I'll end the review with this. If you can look past all the stupid shit that Seagal has said over the years, then you'll enjoy this movie for what it is. A dumb 80s action movie with way more plot than it really needs. Do you still fight? Yes, I do. You still dangerous? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you serious?